Welcome to, welcome to the Tori video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to cover concepts of lambdas within Harlow. In previous videos, we've seen we can use different data structures within Harlow. We have arrays, data sets, and data maps. Sometimes, however, we will find ourselves in situations where we want to search those data structures for a particular value, using a particular name, or to affect some other internal data structures within Harlow. For this particular purpose, there exists the concept of a lambda. Harlow is borrowing the concept of lambda from more general programming terms, and we can define a lambda, sometimes called a lambda expression, as a block of code created for a singular purpose, almost, but not always, as a single line. It accepts one or more input and then performs a very specific task. Lambda can also serve as the value of a variable and can be used multiple times. So in the context of Harlow, when we're talking about lambdas, they help us with a particular set of macros that allow us to search or otherwise affect some larger existing data structure. We use them in combination with not only macros, but other operators. Now when I use the term operator in describing programming, I'm describing something that affects other things. For example, there is the addition operator, what we call the plus sign, the minus operator, or the subtraction operator. In the case of the spread out operator, we are borrowing the concept from the parent language of JavaScript. And what this does is when we have an existing array, we can then expand out or spread out those values back into a comma separated list. So let's look at what I'm talking about here. So example one, notice I'm creating an array using the A macro right here, and notice it is comma separated values, and it's being set into the temporary variable example array. In the very next line right here, I am using two different concepts that I've just explained in concert with each other. So what I'm looking at first here is the use of the find macro. The find macro produces an array and affects some other data structure. We can look through a data structure, usually another array, and find something we're looking for. The thing we're finding is some type of comparison that then will be generated based on the lambda we supply. And we use lambdas with two different keywords. In this particular video, I'm gonna talk about one of the keywords, and in a future video, I will cover the second. In this particular video, we're interested in the keyword where. So the where helps us to create a condition, or what we sometimes call a comparison that we've previously seen, previously seen with the if macro. We can compare one thing to a next. And we see that right here, where, the keyword, and then the comparison we want. In this case, we're interested in find temporary variable entry where entry is greater than five. And then we're going to act on some data structure. Take the data structure in, Take the comparison and then generate some array based on that. So in this case, we are using the spread out operator because the find macro is interested in comma separated values. So we combine comma separated values right here, create an array, and then spread them back out by using three dots, three periods, before the name of the variable containing the other array. So in this particular example, we can get what's called a subarray or a subset of an existing array by using the find macro with a lambda and the spread out operator on another array. In this particular case, we're interested in all of the entries right here that are greater than five. And so when we run this right here, it will take in this total array, one through 10, and give us back an array that just contains the values that match whatever comparison we give it, or in this case, using the concept of a lambda. So let's go ahead and start the story from here. And we get six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, because those are all greater than five. Notice we created the comparison right here that we would normally use with something like the if macro. We combine it with the where keyword, and we create a sentence, find entries where, the something type of comparison, in this case, entry is greater than five. And then what are we affecting? In this case, we are affecting the spread out operator, so spread the values back out of an existing array. So this can be incredibly powerful if we're looking for a particular thing, some type of filter on an existing array. And remember, of course, that we can convert other things like data maps into arrays and it can help us search those. In fact, let's immediately jump into the next example 
as an application of what I was just talking about. So in this case, notice right here that I am using a data map. Now remember, when we talk about data maps, we need to remember that a data map has a name value pair, that everything exists in pairs. We have a name that we then use to access the corresponding value. So in this case, a pretty common setup for a inventory or managing inventory within a larger game might be the use of a data map where each corresponding item has a value of either true or false. And remember, of course, when we're talking about true or false, these are just keywords that are equal to zero and one. So in this case, I have a data map right here, inventory, where sword is true and shield is false. So what I'm interested in is applying a lambda, creating a lambda such that when we search across a corresponding data structure, we get back something we can use. In this particular case, I'm using another macro. So I previously talked about how we can use the find macro to search through an array. We can use the for macro for a similar purpose. When we use the find macro, we're interested in generating a subarray or a subsection of whatever we're searching through. For the for macro, we're interested in acting on everything we find given some type of comparison. So right here, I've created that lambda. So search for name where inventories, and again, this is inventory right here, inventories using the possessive S within Harlow, name that we're going to be generating. So for each name within this, if it is true, then tell us the name. Now this is a little bit tricky because I'm using another macro called DM names. When we use DM names, it creates an array based on the name, the name value part of an existing data map. So we convert a part of a data map, the names part, into an array, and then I'm spreading it back out as we just saw in example one. And then we're basically saying, hey, for every name in this array, and this is just an array of names, use the corresponding name to find the value, again, name value pairs, and if it's true, give me the name right here. So what we should see as a result of this somewhat complicated set of macros and concepts is sword. Because using the name sword gets us the value true, and if inventory's name, so for each thing in here, is true, then give us the name sword. So if we run from here, we see sword. And this was a somewhat complicated example to show that we can create a lambda to help us search through a data map, remembering that we can't directly search through a data map in the same way that we couldn't directly do a number of things with a data map, but we can convert parts of it into an array and then work on that array. And this is where, again, knowledge of data structures and their benefits and potential pitfalls become incredibly important as we make more complicated stories and work with more complicated structures. So, okay, we've previously seen how we can create a lambda using the where keyword to create some type of comparison. We can search through some type of data structure, again, an array usually, using the find macro. If we want to act on some type of subset, we can use the for macro. Let's kind of expand what we have. Move on to the next example. So let's create something fairly complex. So I mentioned in a previous video that we can't use subtraction on a data map. That is, we can't remove a data map or remove thing from a data map. And this is true, but there is a way to go about creating a similar effect. In that, what we want to do is we want to create something and then we want to act on it. So in this case, I'm creating a data map right here. Let's go through this line by line. Creating a data map, sword true, shield true, as we just previously saw. Then we're immediately getting the length using DM names. Again, we can't get the direct length of a data map, but we can get the number of names. And we always remember the names have to be unique. Therefore, if we have an array of names and we get the length of that, we will get the total number of entries. So right here, current length is whatever we just said. And then we're creating a new data map. This is the trick to all of these lines of code. We're starting with an existing data map, we're creating an empty one, then what we're going to do is we're going to act using the for macro on everything in the data map. 
And then when it is not the value we'll want, we're going to recreate a secondary data map without that value. And so here's where things get really interesting. This line's right here. The Lambda says, find a name where name is not sword. So the thing we want to remove is sword. Search through the entire inventory. If it is not sword, then add it to the temporary data map using its name and using its value. Again, pairs. Then right here, we're setting the temporary back to the inventory. We're getting its length one more time, again using DM names, the number of names, which will be a unique number, and then I'm kind of finally showing you its length. So fairly complicated, but what this all says is if there's something we want to remove from a data map, then we create a new data map without it, and then we set the value of the variable back to the data map we just generated. Somewhat complicated, but a way to go about removing things from a data map using lambdas. So let's go ahead and run this just so we can see what this looks like. Current length is two, current length is one. And so what happened? Well, again, I had an existing data map. I just to prove what its, what its length was, we went ahead and got the length right here, created a new temporary data map, searched through the data map right here, using the names, and then whatever the name was not, so create a filter down of whatever it isn't, we create a new data map based on those same values, set the new data map to the old data map name, and then we go get the length again. So we can't subtract from data maps, but using lambdas, we can remove from data maps, but again, creating a new one, adding in everything that is not the name we want, and then coming back and restoring that value. Complicated, but a way to go about the same operation. So finally, let's move over to this last example. So there might be cases where we want to act on everything within a data structure. So we've previously seen how we can use the find macro to search through an array. We can use the for macro to act on some subset, and then we can even use the for macro with lambdas to perform a similar operation from removing from a data map. Finally, there might be situations where we actually want to act on everything that's within some type of array. And for that, there is a special keyword we can use with the for macro called each. And taken right here, we see for each name in the inventory, again, using the spread out operator, operator to give us the corresponding name. So if we move over to example four, let's go ahead and play this. And we have sword and shield. Notice in this case that for each thing in the array, go ahead and give us the name right here, and it will go ahead and give us the name. So in the situations where we want to do something for everything that's in the array, we want to use the for macro with the each keyword. In other cases, we don't necessarily need that, and we can use a lambda, as we saw in example two, and define the lambda that we want to search through an array and then act on some subset in some way. So lambdas are a way that we can create in a comparison that work with other macros to enact some type of change or an action on some type of existing data structure. They are entirely used on other data structures. So as I mentioned, we usually define them as some type of comparison, and then we give it some type of initial thing. So for each thing in this array or for entry where entry is greater than five, do something. And then we can kind of generate or act on those corresponding data structures. So lambdas are incredibly important as we get more complex, but they are a concept that act in connection to other concepts. So we needed to understand data structures before we could get to lambdas, so we could understand how those lambdas affect those data structures. Finally, and in connecting to the next video in sequence, we're going to talk about storylets. Storylets exclusively use lambdas to define how they work. And so in connection, we're moving from data structures to lambdas this video into the next video where we talk about storylets that then use those lambdas to act on corresponding data structures. Thanks for watching.